Meeting all day twelve conflict resolution in startup teams. Waiting for the listeners. Welcome Shabir. Welcome Shami. It is our twelfth day. Welcome Jay. Very happy to see you here. Welcome Aju. So dear friends, we are on a journey. of 100 days discussing entrepreneurship and how it will impact startups you can ask questions and you can learn and in this 100 days in the morning 5 am to 6 am we have two sessions going on one is a mindfulness session which helps you build habits by writing your tasks and the next half hour is your fitness training and after that 10 am to 11 am dubai time you have the high performance entrepreneur series going on and today is the 12th day and i thank everyone every listeners for coming and joining up telling this i have my communication coach who helps entrepreneurs become confident and impactful speakers she is a business woman she is a distinguished toast master a write an author of three books i would like to call jodhika shetty to the stage and jodhika would moderate today's event and the stage is yours jodhika thank you very much kabir a very good morning and uh, thank you for that lovely introduction it really makes me it puts me on a high when someone introduces me like that so thank you very much kabir and a warm welcome to all our listeners today who are joining from different parts of the world from different backgrounds and different countries and profession it is it is indeed my pleasure and honor to be your moderator today we have our panel of speakers who are again joining us from different parts of the world to add value to yet another burning topic called the conflict resolution in startup teams So this is the hundred days and hundred audio events, just like Kabir mentioned. And the entire objective of this series uh, is to help the entrepreneurs get better at what they are doing, help them in their journey. Uh, we all believe that entrepreneurship can be a lonely journey sometimes, and this is the time when you really need someone to step in and say that, "Hey, listen, I'm there for you, and this is the way we go forward." So that's the whole objective of this series, and uh, we deep dive into the world of startups, entrepreneurship, and innovation. we have different segments we talk about that is communication artificial intelligence brand building a um, lot of things a lot of things that we talk about in this particular uh, segments for the next 100 days and today we are talking about communication and one key aspect of communication is also negotiating or also co- uh, settling conflicts in organizations so today we're going to talk about resolving conflicts in startup teams Conflict is a natural part of any collaborative effort, isn't it? In a high fast-paced environment, high stressed environment, especially in a startup when you have a lot of aspirations, a lot of plans to put in place, you have a team to uh, run and tensions can run high. However, how ha- conflicts are managed uh, conflicts that are managed uh, can be different in different teams. Everything is not the same. Each team has its own dynamics and each team comes with its its own challenges. But learning how to handle them uh enables teams to thrive and before one falls apart so falling apart is not a solution we have to always see how we can get the team together in the most seamless manner so in today's session we'll be exploring the ins and outs of conflict resolution without within startup teams we'll draw on some real life experience as well panel insights and practical strategies that you can implement in your own business whether it's a startup or you're already a seasoned entrepreneur with an uh, with a with a business or uh, with considerable experience in business so the whole objective is to foster a harmonious and productive work environment so whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting out on a journey in the wor- world of startup you won't want to miss this episode because this is the episode that will give you a lot of practical tips let me now take the opportunity to introduce our panel today who will join me in the discussion and add their experience let me start with sara grinison she is the engineering director of novoda and 
founder and course instructor at Agasso Coaching, Netherlands. She started her journey in the 90s as a software engineer and ever since has continuously evolved to giving trainings, adopting scrum, scrum framework, agile methodologies, leadership, liberating structures and coaching in 2019. She's joining me from the Netherlands. A warm welcome, Sarah. If you can say hi to our audience. Hello there, um, from the Netherlands. A warm welcome. Our next panelist is Laura Van LaRusso, who is a communication skills coach. She holds an MA in TESOL and carries 15 years of ESOL teaching experience and seven years of advocacy and staff training experience. Laura specializes in confidence building, presentation and leadership skills and works with established professionals who speak English as a second language. Today, she's joining us from New York, the United States of America. A warm welcome, Laura. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Laura, we know it's almost two o'clock there and we're really happy that you're joining. You've taken time to join us from, from the US, uh, which is your midnight there. So thank you very much. You are welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. Our third panelist is a software engineer from QSAT, that's Cochin University of Science and Technology. An entrepreneur, and he, ha he has an entrepreneurial experience of over 15 years in Dubai and India. And he has some of the successful startups. He's failed, he's won, he's done a lot of things, but he carries with him considerable experience in this domain. Currently, he's a chief executive officer at Simplify Agri Limited India and Simplified Enterprises Management India. The company recently won an award for upskilling farmers for 21st century for creating a bookkeeping software, which is for, now this bookkeeping software is for the farmers, which was first of its kind in India. And they were honored with an award as the best uh, startup or the best um, software in this domain. He has considerable experience, like I mentioned, in startups, both in the UAE and India also has dealt with a lot of conflicts within teams so definitely he'll be able to add a lot of practical input to our discussion today warm welcome rajesh and thank you very much for joining us today from india thank you jodhiga and i'm really happy to join the panel and uh, meet uh, uh, see you all so let's continue right we also have our listeners listening to us here so warm welcome to all of them who have joined just now, that's Deborah, Leslie, Shahida, Kondekar, Peter, Jassir, and all of you who have joined, <clears throat> who have taken the time to join us. I hope you have a really great time listening to us for the next one hour. Now, just a few ground rules that I'll set so that we have a seamless conversation today. For the first half hour, I'm going to speak to, <clears throat> excuse me, for the first 30 minutes, I'll speak to our panelist ask them various questions of how conflict can be resolved in a team. And then I'll open the floor for discussion or your questions. So please feel free to raise your hand and we'll take you into the panel. So you can ask a few questions if you have any burning question to ask our panelist. So these are the ground rules. Please feel free to connect with each other because collaborative efforts is the best way forward in business. So please feel free to connect with each other. Having said that, let me now start with the first question that I have. I've just given a brief of what conflict resolution is, Let, but let's hear it from the panelists that are here today. My first question is to Sarah. Sarah, you may unmute yourself. Now mm -hmm. you've been in this, you've been in team building activities and you've been in agile, you, you adopted agile methodologies, right? Um, yes. I would like to know what are some of the common sources of conflict within teams? And how effective communication be to help them address these problems? Um, conflict in teams is a topic uh, throughout our lives. So not just in the workplace. Um, uh, you can consider your own uh, relationships um, in the family, also a team, uh, also um, working together with colleagues when you were in school. And then of course, when you enter the work world, um, you need to work with people, which maybe you didn't choose to have in your life, but uh, you're working together to accomplish a common goal together. The basis of most conflict 
has to do with um, people's values not being honored. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very important part when you are starting a new team together is to figure out who are these people in my team? What do they stand for? What are their values? What's important to them? Um, and as a, let's say, leader of a team, um, I even suggest bringing the team into the conflict as soon as possible so that it's not uh, waiting until there's a real conflict when you start having these kind of conversations, especially when a new team is forming. Uh, when a new team is forming, you're in this elation stage because you're excited about having uh, this new goal and you're, you're excited about uh, working together. So very often it's a stage where people are um, not sharing that much about themselves yet. They're not they're not um, really digging deep yet into what's important to them. And um, it's it's this false sense of, you know, we're going to accomplish this. Everything's great. Let's move forward. And a sound leader is going to say, hey, let's let's dig into already what could be a conflict and let's start discussing how we can make sure all values in the team are going to be honored um, already. Um, I don't know if that's, if we're already talking about how to um, resolve uh, these conflicts early on, or if you just wanted to um, know where they can start. Yeah, I just wanted to know what are the common sources of conflict within the team? Yeah, the common, the common source is, it's, it's related. It's so interesting. People are people are unique beings. They have different life paths. Um, our values are starting from our childhood. Uh, it, we could have trauma in our life. We could have had parents that had um, specific requirements on us, uh, societies which have certain requirements on us, and that's where our values are um, originating from. And uh, these cause us to have emotions and feelings. And what's very interesting, you can act exactly the same way with one person and not trigger any kind of emotion in them because it's not sitting or touching upon their values. And you could be having someone completely new in your team that you've never worked with and you're doing exactly the same behavior and you could be triggering them uh, just by the way you speak. Yes. So I think uh, what, what you're trying to say is emotion is the primary driver of conflicts in an organization, isn't it? Or any any place for that matter. It begins from feeling in a certain way and probably not understanding each other at the same level. Yes, 100%. And what's difficult is a lot of people, uh, even high professionals, I find, are quite unaware of their own values. Um, and... And as a leader, you need to get people to look at themselves, what's really important for you, what's the source of this conflict really coming from, and it's, it's, it's really starting from there, and it, it can happen on every team. Right, so some, some, for, some form of root cause analysis or introspection is definitely required. Thank you, Sarah, for that. And now let no me problem. move on to Laura. Laura, Laura. We just started off with the question, finding out what are the primary sources of conflict. And we found out that, or rather, we just discussed that emotion is one of the primary drivers of conflict. So as far as communication, have you been in the communication field and uh, you've been talking to a lot of high professionals? So how do you think communication can help address these issues that, that, that crop up in, in a team? Um, I appreciate the question. Yes, certainly having the proper perspective before you go into the organization or before you approach the team, uh, everything starts with us as the coaches or consultants, number one, which means that uh, as Sarah uh, makes a very good point, we have to be very aware of our own mindsets, our own assumptions, our own awareness or lack of awareness of our uh, differences in perspectives. What are we bringing to the table? And then in terms of fostering better communication, 
on teams, we have to listen to our clients because often, you know, we perceive ourselves as the experts and we go in there, we're problem solvers. We go in there and we say, uh, well, the reason that you're having this issue is because this department is not talking to this department in such a way that they can understand each other, or you need to measure your progress uh, according to this mechanism or that mechanism. We have all the answers. But rather than go in with all the answers, your first step in terms of communication is to listen proactively to the pain points that uh, your organization and or clients are identifying for you. You're not there to provide the an answer immediately. You're there to listen. And another aspect of good communication practice is to assess the commitment uh, on the part of the organization and or client. Uh, I wish I had another word to describe, uh, but we'll use client for right now. Uh, assess their willingness to address those pain points and help identify barriers that would prevent them. For example, there might be a misunderstanding uh, for uh, what diversity, equity, and inclusion actually means. And so if you're trying to establish better hiring practices to increase uh, opportunities for diverse professionals, you have to make sure that there's a clear understanding across the board of who you're talking about and who you're trying to support. And then finally, providing clarity by allowing these teams to report back to you and to share in their concerns and they will only do that if they trust you. And how do you establish trust? By being an active listener, by asking proactive questions, and by looking at what they have done well and acknowledging that, but then also kindly and respectfully um, supporting them once you find out the barriers to their success. And then working together and creating some kind of strategic plan. So that's that's what I have thus far. Well, yeah, thank you, Laura. That's really nice. I mean, those are some, some, some effective tips, and I think these will go a long way. So if you're running a startup or, an on, or, or a company, for that matter, which has considerable experience and are facing uh, conflict conflicts within your team, I think some of the qualities that, as a leader is you have to listen to your team assess their willingness to address the problem, providing clarity to report back to you. So that develops the trust as well. And ask some pro proactive questions like Laura mentioned. I'm just repeating what Laura mentioned to just put things in perspective. Acknowledge and support. So when you are a leader who is supporting your team and they know that they can trust you, I think conflicts also sort of reduce within a team. So thank you for that, Laura. And now quickly, so welcome to uh, Dr. Sujit Menon. I think you've been having some technical problem. You've been going uh, out and into the room. So welcome again. Rajesh, this question is to you now. You've run a business and you have some practical or not some, a lot of practical experience in probably handling these kind of issues. So can you share an example of a conflict that arose within your team that you were a part of and how did you resolve it? Okay. Uh... Uh, there were many conflicts actually. I mean, I've failed many times as an entrepreneur. Many of our projects have failed, and uh, many got successful. But there are there were a lot of lot a lot of conflicts or a lot of instances where uh, we were in a dilemma how to proceed further. And mostly it was as uh, Miss as, I mean, as Sarah told. The, most of the conflicts were actually emotional, related to emotions of individuals who are involved in the conflicts. I mean, we have stakeholders who are actually working with us, who are partners in the company, who are investors in the company, who are clients with the company. And uh, at times what happens is emotion, emotional conflict between these stakeholders actually pick up and come to a point where the project itself is... Uh, uh, in danger. So uh, one of it is actually, um, say, we were to provide a solution to a particular client, a software solution to a particular client. And uh, the senior technical team actually chose a platform which they were really com comfortable with, plus they were really passionate about. 
but in fact actually um, the solution was to be simple the solution was to be in in, in the budget and the client had a specific timeline by that time we have to complete it but if you continue with it a platform which was chosen by the team i mean leaders of the team it was going to be almost impossible to get it completed in time and get it completed within the budget so it was very tough for us to convince the leaders that i mean team leaders that this is what you have to do though because they were very passionate they were very emotional about their knowledge is it came to a situation where they felt like actually we were questioning their ability to work in that particular project i mean so uh, these things happen i mean how we try to resolve this i mean uh, from the beginning itself i mean we try to build a habit in them or build a feel in them that uh, i myself is an individual the team leader is an individual the one who is working in it i mean as a team member is an individual every members of the teams are individuals and they have their own individuality the same way the project itself is a independent entity and the project is to be respected as an individual itself only then you will actually try to subsidize your egos your emotions your feelings and put the team forward or put the pro project ahead of you and see what is good for the project or see what is good for the company i'm specifically mentioning a project because uh, it's not just about the brand simplify agri is a brand that we try to create inside i mean we try to create an emotion for customers or farmers who use the use the software we try to create an emotion for the I mean for my team members who are working with the team uh, to actually be related to that particular brand but beside that every project every small task in that particular project i mean that particular company need to be treated as an entity that's what we try to do so that uh, say when it comes to a conflict they will actually see this project ahead of them them and their personal egos will be actually set aside they know like okay i have this problem i have this this disagreement with the uh, decision but then i keep the project ahead of myself so i agree to this and i'll actually put my 100% into it this is how to an extent we were able to resolve and go ahead so uh rajesh what you're saying is then there has to be a first of all there has to be communication between the team certain certain rules have to be laid down as far as what the project objective is what is the final objective in terms of the mission of the entire project so the project comes first than the personal egos of people that's what you're saying right you have to respect people while you have to respect people you also have to respect the common objective that you're there for a lot one sentence to actually explain what we do we give an open platform to fight we actually said ask them to bring up with every ideas every possible solutions and then once the team decides okay this has to be done then everyone need to stand with this at that time they stand with it with it ahead of their egos only if they consider that the project is ahead of them i mean project is an individual which need to be respected that's what we do right it. fantastic thank you very much rajesh for that um dr sujit Okay, what we're going to do is let me just because we just have another half an hour, thirty-five minutes to go. So what we will do is we will restrict our answers to maximum one minute, so we can cover as many questions as possible. Is that okay for the team for the panelist? Right. All right. Let's move to the next question, Sara. That's for you. Uh, this next question is for you. Uh, can you provide some strategies for preventing conflicts from escalating in a team setting? how do you do that what are your recommendations again um i go back to conflict is normally a little bit deeper than the conviction which people are fighting for so usually it's good to remind the group or the pair or the 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 people that are having the conflict what intention do we have working together what do we want to accomplish together and bring them back to that joint uh um purpose and what's it they they need to realize is you can have different convictions in the same space um you don't need to uh convince each other that your own conviction is true um uh, people get very focused sometimes on the how something gets done rather than what we want to accomplish together and 
go again back to your values. Um, I'm, I see uh, this thing happening. Um, it makes me feel so be personal and vulnerable in this, this fear is getting triggered in me, or I feel scared, or I feel nervous, and then state uh, why it is. Um, uh, for me, uh, quality is one of my values, um, and I get nervous uh, when I see this uh, thing happen, like uh, deadlines are being missed, um, and this is what I need. And if, if you can get people to talk about that, uh, their real core need uh, in order to thrive and uh, get away from the conviction that they're trying to convince everyone else in the room that it has to be done like this. And you ask the other people like, so what do you need? And you start focusing on those values and what people need, then you can come up with solutions, um, which are maybe completely different than the convictions that everyone has in the room, which support everyone's needs. And you go again, back to the intention that you have working together. That means it's very give, fast. Uh, right. Run through. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Thank you, Sarah. I know. I mean, I think you can. I mean, one minute is too less. I know yeah, that. I can. I you can, can talk about it for. for <laughs> you half can an talk hour about it itself. more. I, I give that. a course on this. So <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, it's it's practically impossible to know everyone's values, right? When you speak, uh, when you coordinate in a team, because unless mm -hmm. you're really having this a meeting when they are onboarded into the system. Uh, what is the other strategy that can people people can adopt uh, in order to identify those values or understand people? Is it just conversation and communication or is there something else? Uh, people need to own themselves. So even as a leader, when I have someone coming to me and saying, ah, this person is doing this to me, etc. I don't go in and solve the problem for them. I get them to figure out what the real problem is, what value is getting uh, um, uh, pushed upon, and I get them to have that brave conversation themselves. So setting them up for the formula of, this is our intention to work together, this is what I see, it's purely factual when you say this is what I see, and saying, I feel this, I need this, and uh, getting people to talk about themselves and that this feeling really getting vulnerable in their feeling instead of attacking each other mm -hmm. instead of calling each other hey you're a micromanager or you're doing this to me it's always about you so of course um if you get everyone in the room uh being able to talk about the emotions that they have right. and where the source is and being able to say this is what i need um you don't need to know everyone's values in the room because everyone's going to be able to talk about it themselves. They're going to be able to mention it. Hey, this is what's happening to me. Um, uh, uh, can, can we, can we try it another way? And uh, that's what I would suggest. And please okay. don't go in fighting someone else's battle. Like I know a lot of leaders and coaches want to do that. Like they go in, but what happens as a side effect is you end up creating some kind of toxic triangulation where you are the savior or the, the, the one that's the, the hero in the room, then you're going to have a victim. And whenever you get a victim, there's going to be a persecutor in the room and you're going to create some kind of toxicity. So in order to avoid the toxicity, you need to get people to have those conversations themselves and to learn how to step in the room and own their own feelings and state this these facts uh, are causing that feeling and don't judge or call people names or say you're doing this to me because they're not doing that to you. Your feelings can come from a lifetime of experiences or how your parents treated you or trauma in your past. Those are your feelings, but it's good to talk about them so that you can come to a resolution and how to uh, um, work together. So very fast uh, rush through. <laughs> right. So I think it also it also uh, comes down to developing a culture of transparency, right? And yes, promoting it's all that about kind that. of yes. So developing the culture in whatever culture you want to actually follow in your organization, there has to be an effort put towards that direction of developing culture that you want to promote in your organization and become makes it much easier. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Now, um, no Laura, I'd like to bring you in in the conversation now. Uh, could you give some tips on how to approach facilitating a difficult conversation between team members who are in conflict? Yes. Well, 
I would like to add that, you know, when we're having a situation where you have team members that are in conflict, remember, if you are the mediator, you are there to provide three things. First of all, clarity, which means you are engaging in your active listening. And you are, as Sarah says, you are not there to take sides. You are there to listen objectively to both sides uh, of the concerns of either party. And then the other thing is to also be very consistent in your reactions, in your responses. You should always, um, well, I hate this. I shouldn't say should, should, should. You know, should have, would have gets us in trouble sometimes. But it is highly effective, however, to be, um, how can I say this? To be consistent in your problem solving. So it's almost like when we were kids, you know, you would get in trouble and they would say, well, the whole lot of you are in trouble. You know, the whole group of you are in trouble. There's no, so there needs to be, there needs to be not necessarily trouble, but there needs to be a consistent across the board mechanism for um, response to crisis intervention. So number one is providing the um, clarity num and objectivity. Number two is creating equity in your response. And then number three, the cultural awareness. And as you rightly point out, cultural awareness is not only about the differences of where we come from and our language differences and our understanding and perspective of the world, but rather what is the workplace culture? What does that look like? What, as uh, many people have often said, what have the leaders established as acceptable um, behavior in their workplace cultures? And how do you use that to promote better communication? So for example, not one person on that team should ever feel like they do not have a voice. Um, that's very important. And that's, that's, those are my suggestions. I hope right. they were clear and helpful. That's, that's, you've made an important point here, Laura, which is cultural awareness. Most of the time, or you know, especially in a uh, multicultural environment, what happens is each one does not understand the acceptable cultural standards uh, that each one of us have. So when there are two people from different cultural background come together, if you do not understand what is acceptable to them, things can go wrong. So I think that is something that we as entrepreneurs must understand when you have team coming from different backgrounds. First, make uh, make some effort to understand what each each of their employees or each of the team members um, are accustomed to, are used to, and what are they willing to uh, learn as, as they go forward in the team. Uh, so, all right, let's move, me, uh, let's move to the next question. But before that, let me welcome Professor Roger, Professor Roger and Dr. Sujit and Jasir. Welcome to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Jyotir. Thank you. All right. Thank before you for I having us. You, you're most welcome. Before, before I come to you, I have a question for uh, Rijish. Rijish, now you've been a founder in multiple companies and multiple teams. I'd like to know as founders or team leaders, uh, what, what can a founder do to create that culture of open communication? Uh, one is uh, the most important thing that uh, I believe is actually giving an individual space to every stakeholders in the company, be it a member of the team, be it a client actually, or uh, even uh, be it someone who is actually providing service to us, give a space for them to communicate properly and uh, say and uh, develop a habit of actually uh, people listening to each other. So when someone says and you jump into the gun and uh, you pursue like uh, you you try to speak out for them or spike to try to speak out on their behalf, then it's not going to be working fine for the team members in every every stage. So from the beginning itself, 
during the induction itself make sure everyone gets their space for communication and make sure no one uh, take a larger cake of it say for example if, uh, say if we are sitting together and one person is actually to keep on speaking not giving space to others then we should actually restrict it in the initial stages itself and uh, any communication uh, should be uh, properly uh, say uh, listen to and people are responsible i mean team leaders or the leaders who are responsible should be willing to give time to uh, listen to the team members at every stage uh, obviously on professional matter matters only so then you know, this actually keeps a, a culture in the team that uh, say anyone in the team uh, be it, uh, irrespective of the hierarchy is reachable when it, the concern is actually serious and the concern is uh, say something to be attended on and uh, we should make sure like we don't uh, get into uh, issues or problems which need to be neglected i mean there not every issue is to be attended not every issue is to be discussed not every issue is to be uh, say like uh, acted upon there are issues which you need to listen but then neglect it i mean uh, say say set aside i mean we should say that this is not something that uh, we are uh, willing to or we are not we are in a position to attend at this point of time so we need to keep it aside this is nothing which concerns the company the team or the project then we need to move ahead i mean we don't need to waste time on it time or resource or energy on it so every conflict can be say like avoid it if you are actually giving a space for the person to uh, speak out in the early stage itself right so uh, deal with the problem or deal with the with the solution have a solution from the from the very beginning stage do not let things to move exactly. uh, far ahead it's, it's, so give it, it's always easy to uh, kill it in the bud itself rather than allow it to be a tree absolutely absolutely and I, that comes with respect i think giving it every individual to voice their opinion or voice their uh, and do not assume that you are the savior there for everyone there right so thank you very much rajesh for that now let me move on to dr sujit menon dr sujit are you there yes yes jyotika all right uh, dr sujit now you are in the education education field and i'm sure you must have you probably are doing a lot of online education as well right and your teams probably are dealing with uh, dealing online in remote locations so even if you're not i'm sure you must be having some kind of experience there i'd like to know uh, when it's the it's the era of virtual and remote teams right so what are some of the unique challenges when it comes to conflict resolution and how can they be overcome i'm specifically talking about virtual or remote teams Oh yes, very very relevant question. So as Geelings, we operate in around eight countries across GCC, and we are around six offices in India. So this is bound to happen, right? So me basically, uh, I think uh, Laura and Sara they are both stressed on the personal uh, reasons as to why uh, conflicts happen because of values, cultural differences. I would like to emphasize on the corporate issues that generally create conflicts. So one is assum assumption. You assume that this particular task that was assigned to your department is being done by somebody else. So a lack of communication within the team, and that is spearheaded by the department head or the project lead. That that is the major cause of communication issues in an organizations and and when when there does come issues because that is bound to happen my primary philosophy is to listen so i spend around 80% identifying as to what is the cause of the issue why did it happen and and uh, not to pinpoint anybody or blame anybody but use it as an experience so that it doesn't get repeated so it could be because of like i said an assumption factor maybe they thought that would be done by the client and it was not their job maybe they thought it was already there and it was not to be done so there could be a lot of different issues which which are uh, which normally come up and when i look at a conflict there are uh two three kinds when it's ex exactly international and they they assume the head office would do it the head office assumes the branch will do it so there could be those issues now the two employees who are at logger heads could be competing with one another maybe at the same level and then you are in a position where you need to get a solution and 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 try to be neutral and then play a neutral game sometimes it is just collaboration so I'm like you do this part and the other team will take care of that clarify it so that from the next time that does not happen the third uh, the third kind of scenario that i normally feel is that they avoid each other 
you know they don't want to talk to each other and that particular message doesn't get communicated neither uh, in an email or in a, a telephone call and and the best and what i always try to do is bring them both together and accommodate them and make sure that they are part of a team and whether they are in two different branches they are still one team so get that cohesive factor together and my role as a leader always would be is to empower my employees and make sure that they collaborate and move together so collaboration is my uh, is my uh, goal and like i said i spend 80% of the time when you listen so all of them have issues listen to them before you jump the gun and make your decision because sometimes you think that is the problem but when you hear to both the parties over a period of the period of time and you listen to both of them giving them 30 minutes each uh, you know it becomes very very clear to you as to what the issue is and when you do that collect the facts you know don't go by emotions don't go by your personal judgment collect facts as to whether that message was communicated whether that particular email or that particular message was forwarded and if yes provide take the evidence so when you do that and a couple of times that has happened in our organization in the past and now people people realize that when they need to when they raise something obviously they are going to ask for that if i have not communicated or not done it i better not raise an issue so they come back to the accommodating or to the collaborating phase so for us it is reducing but like i said we are all humans and bound to get into uh, emotional and ego issues and uh, and uh, my aim in an organization is always to ensure that uh, we all uh, collaborate and move together thank you thank you jyotika thank you Kapil. thank you thank you dr sujith absolutely collaboration is the best way forward and i firmly believe in that like you said i think empowering individuals and sometimes sometimes the problem is not a problem it is just a misunderstanding isn't it it is just that uh, we assume things uh, through the emotional uh, angle and it 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 turns out that the problem is not a problem so i think the best way forward is to listen um, create clarity have a conversation and there you are you can solve a problem thank you dr sujit let's move on to jasir hi jasir hi jasir how are you I'm fine, Jasser. Jasser is a LinkedIn expert uh, here in in the LinkedIn space. He's an expert in building his if building link br- your brand on LinkedIn. So, Jasser, welcome to the conversation. Thank you so, so much. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to hear. So have you faced any kind of conflict when you were working, or even on the business side? Have you faced any conflict, and how did you overcome this, or how did you solve the conflict? yeah definitely um, i worked in uh, uh, mnc's like uh, fcm as well as startups as, uh, as well so the d- dynamics are different um, in in uh, larger organizations there's a structure and there's someone who can uh, interfere and uh, you know tell you uh, help with it but uh, dynamics are different in startups you know uh, where you have uh, sometimes your co-founders and uh, uh, that makes um, it's slightly different diff- uh, it's a different dynamic it's slightly, slightly different to um, approach uh, uh, in those situation and actually had that uh, as a question for the panel um, like uh, uh, you know in the, the like the end when there are co founders and like there are like equals and um, there are um, uh, conflicts come up um, so uh, can i make that a question sure okay. sure sure like, please, sorry, please go ahead so uh, what are your tips for de escalating in such a scenario what especially specific for startups when you know amongst co-founders and you have peers and uh, you know uh, you know conflicts come up and then um, you need to find a way to de escalate it's different from organizations with the hierarchy and structure so um, i just wanted to ask that who would like to ask uh, that question so what are the tips that you suggest mm. actually you heard asara and uh, laura talking about that right it's the best way is to first of all you know um, have a communication understand what the values of the other people are uh, develop a culture but i think if for mm. specifically answering jasser's question who would like to take that question i uh, can add something um okay. i imagine um you have two parents in the room that are going through a divorce and they are fighting because they are 
maybe they're they're not really happy about how the other one uh, is as a partner, and they're really stuck on, you know, this one is doing that, and that one is doing that, etc. There's one sentence which can bring both parents down to a calm and proceed forward so that they can work together. And what the meteor would say is, you both love and care for your children. Um, can we try to focus on how to make sure that your children have a, a good future forward? So uh, by reminding the people in the room what everyone in the room cares about, uh, it can de-escalate almost instantly that tension in the room because it, 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 it's almost like a, a bringing them back to this is our purpose. Let's, let's uh, focus on that you know, and it de-escalates the room almost immediately. Does that answer your question, Jasset? All right, do you want yeah, to add something? That's interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting, interesting perspective. Uh, yeah. I would love to add something if possible. <clears throat> yes, please go ahead. Okay, so I uh, completely support that idea of the idea of the divorce and the parents. And, you know, it's interesting to me because going in and providing services as a coach, for example, although I, I sort of am the startup, I suppose, what I've learned is that we have to be very clear about our purpose and our intention. And we have to ask the same of the other startups or give that advice to our fellow entrepreneurs. Because, for example, I was uh, working for an organization where the administration said it's essential that the staff become more willing and proactive about speaking English during staff meetings. And then the staff's point of view was, no, we speak plenty of English all day long, um, and even at staff meetings, it's only during our personal time that we speak in our home languages. And as the facilitator and as the person who is de-escalating, or my intention is always to de-escalate, of course, I began to realize that two things were happening. Number one, there was a sensitivity about this idea of who's speaking the English and why. And number two, um, this misunderstanding that if you had staff in this particular scenario, who you perceived as not participating in staff meetings, it is not that they do not want to, but it might be because they do not feel welcomed, heard, listened to, or they may lack a certain level of confidence um, in participating. It did not mean that they were not willing to speak more English or in fact that they were not speaking just as much English as someone else. For example, I'm saying for example. So we have to be very aware of what we are providing in our services and also aware of sensitivities because we have good intention, but those good intentions can often be misinterpreted. That's all. Thank right. you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Let me now move on to Professor Roger. Professor Roger White, do you have a question yeah. for the panel? Um, yeah, I have a question also. Um, I had a statement about uh, Josh Shear. He was talking about de-escalation. We, we, we manage uh, the company I work for. I don't want to dox myself. But the, com the, the company I work for is a huge software company, and we acquire a lot of startups and on uh, a lot of different cultures and, and stuff. And we had issues like the example Laura gave of, um, I don't know, language and culture. So the, 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 the first thing we found, uh, we found as, as a leader, as management, is that we get caught up in these conflicts and we make a decision based on our biases um what what a first what a conflict is and what the resolution should be before we even hear anybody because we're human too right um one thing that we struggle
stressed is that let's, um, you know, especially us in cybersecurity, there's something called how to, you know, how to identify that this is an incident or a breach or it's just a troubleshooting ticket, right? If someone says, oh, my computer's running slow, is that a virus or is that just, you know, your computer acting up, right? Or your internet's running slow. So we, you know, we, we have to, uh, identify and declare that this is an incident. And I think the same thing with conflict resolution and in Laura's example, for us, that's not a conflict. The root cause of that is not people are talking a different language to spite somebody or, or, you know, to, to cause conflict. They speak in a different language because they speak a different language and they feel comfortable in their language. But to somebody else, the root cause of that is ignorance. So let's address the root cause instead of creating, making, declaring, because as a leadership, if we say it's a conflict, then it is a conflict. You can never go back from that. So we have to be careful in declaring a thing, a conflict. Right. And finding the root cause first. Right. And this goes to Darcyr. The best way to do it is find the root cause and address that. Right. Some, you know, how do you address like in Laura's incident? You can't speak your language. That is insane. <laughs> now, now you really cause the conflict. Right. So this is sometimes in our leadership, we think, like she said, you think you're doing something right. But. You're really not, right? So we need to address, you know, we have to make sure we're addressing the root causes of these and don't get caught up in in people's, you know, whatever, internal conflicts. Like like Sarah said earlier, right? It's some sometimes it's, post, it's trauma. So, you know, we, we got to make sure we don't get caught up in all that. That's a very good insight to this uh, particular point, uh, Professor Roger. And I think this opens another point here that feedback is an essential tool in an organization. If we close the channel of feedback, then we close our path to success or growth. So when you open, whether it's anything, because you could be probably under a misunderstanding that you're doing your job well, just like you said. And even for that organization, for that matter. So I guess when a feedback comes in, then probably things will also fall into perspective where emotions will be put in the back burner and you know that you have an object to serve here. So thank you very much, Professor Roger. I have one last question. Rather, uh, yeah, we have eight minutes to go. And let's just talk about some, since we are talking about technology here, Professor Roger brought in a very important point of uh, having a technology in his own domain. I want to know, is there any communication tool or technology that can aid in conflict resolution within teams, uh, like an online collaborative platform or conflict resolution software? I know Rajesh, is in, Rajesh and Sara both are into IT and Professor Roger also is in that domain. Um, any one of you could please answer this question. Is there any online tool that people can use, a collaborative platform that can reduce conflict resolution? Yeah, here's the thing with technology, right? Uh, when there's a conflict, people get paranoid. And th this is another thing we got to understand as leadership. Not everybody is going to be kumbaya with us. Not everybody's going to express their feelings because of our position, right? And, you know, you just don't, you don't tell your parents everything, right? So it's the same thing we're seen, seen in that authoritative light. So... I, when we had conflicts, we did have software. I work for a software, software company. We developed the collaborative software and all that. Um, but people didn't, people didn't uh, engage because they felt that that software was tracking them or, you know, like you couldn't truly be anonymous. Right. Because, you know, my IP address, you know, it's, it's just it was just people's um, fear. Right. So what we did was this. We tell we went old school. We had everybody write their problems on the index card. And, um, you know, 
if you have a pro, you know, like especially we call it the 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 smoke show, right? And in America, we have a saying: "Bring the smoke." That means bring your issues, right? Bring you know uh, problems you have with me. Bring it, right? So people don't want to do that. So, but they'll do it if they're if they know that they're truly anonymous. And so, um, I don't think a software would achieve that, especially a software if the if they if they have conflicts with management and the management is the one that owns the software. You, you see how the conflict is. So we we went old school. We went postcards, right? Um, we had different color post postcards. My my postcard would be red. Another manager's postcard would be blue. You grab the postcard and you write your issues. You could write it, you could type it, whatever your issues, and you put it into a bucket and we read them all out, right? That that's people trusted that more than uh, collaborative software that we had, which did the same thing, but they felt that they wasn't being anonymous. Yeah, I think old sometimes old methodologies work very well, isn't it? They're much yes, more human. Yeah, they, yeah right. Thank you, Professor Roger. Yes, add. yes, Sarah. Um, especially for online uh, environments, I work for a remote team. Um, my team is based uh, all over the world, uh, and the base company is in the UK, and I'm in the Netherlands. Uh, and um, as you can see, also in this kind of environment where we're trying to speak, it can be hard to know when it's your turn to talk, you know? So, um, people interrupt each other or talk over each other very easily in an online environment. So uh, it's a very simple tool that I use uh, when I'm trying to um, get through a hard discussion with a team. And that's a simple Trello board where you have uh, three columns in it. So one of them is all of the attendees. They all have their own name uh, in the attendee list. One is I have something I would like to say. So they just drag their index cards to I have something I'd like to say. And the other column is I'm talking. And the facilitator uh, is, is there to make sure that people adhere to the basic rules. Um, the person that's talking they're the only person that can drag their card out of the I'm talking column. And the facilitator is the one that allows the next person to bring their card to the I'm talking column. So it prevents people from, if you've ever been in a conflict where people are arguing and they're interrupting each other, they don't let each other finish, it prevents that 100%. So the person gets to keep their card there until they're finished, then they bring their card over and then the facilitator says, okay, uh, um, uh, Laura, it's your turn to speak. And then she drags her card over to I'm talking. She talks as long as she needs to. And it really facilitates, especially in an online environment, a place where you can speak your mind out without interrupting each other. And everyone has an equal opportunity to voice what they need to voice. So it's it's a very simple thing. You could probably do it with mirror board or something like that. But uh, I, I find it works very, very effectively um, in an online setting. Well, that's lovely, Sarah. And those of you who find it interesting, which I have, please contact Sarah. I'm sure she'll add much more value to your organization in terms of conflict resolution with this innovative tool. Thank you, Sarah, for that. Uh, let's move on to Rajesh. A final parting note, if you can tell me in 30 seconds, what is the best effective way to deal with a problem? Understand the problem and uh, say, allow uh, every stakeholder to speak up and uh, put the project or the company ahead of uh, individuals and emotions. And the person who is trying to resolve the problem, keep all your egos and uh, beliefs aside, keep your ears and eyes open to that particular instant, that particular solution and act upon facts, not on emotions. Thank you, Rajesh. That is effective and a great recommendation. Laura, parting notes from you in 30 seconds. I think in order to be a proactive leader and an effective, impactful leader, you have to be a good listener and, uh, and you have to be willing to acknowledge certain pain points that are either brought to your attention or that you are recognizing 
through your own self-reflection and also through your interaction has been, has, has been said uh, with the staff team or administrative leaders. Uh, there are certain pain points there that need to be acknowledged, discussed openly and objectively. And then uh, those assumptions that can happen can then be diminished. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Roger and Dr. Sujit. If you have any parting notes, just for the next 10 seconds. Yeah, on uh, empathy. I, I, I had an in incident where a guy was eating at his desk and the other team members didn't like that. So as, instead of me addressing that, I said, I, I went to him and said, why do you eat, you eat at your desk? And um, he said, because I could get work done better you know um then okay and, and i can't take my laptop in the in the lunch room i said oh okay we'll just change that rule you can now take your laptop in the lunch room there you go what's the difference he's eating at his desk anyway right so yeah go ahead take your laptop in the lunch room right and we passed it with security make sure that it's secure and it make sure we all talked about it and we worked it out and now people, now everybody's eating in the lunchroom with their laptops. There you go. Great. Right? So, so for every problem, a, a, there a, is a, a solution. Exactly. Right? But sometimes right. you got to know that going up front. Right. All right, Sujit, Dr. Sujit, 10 seconds. We're closing the session now. All right, this is definitely going to be, this has been a great a great session for me at least, and I'm sure the listeners have taken some really valuable thoughts. I really feel that we should have a second part of this session because there's so much to say, so much to speak, so much to talk. First of all, let me close by thanking the panelists, Sarah, Laura, thank you for your time because you have, I know it's midnight there. It's too early or either it's midnight. You've been here, both of you from different parts of the world. So thank you very much. Rajesh, I'm so thankful to you for the last minute invite. You said yes, and you're here. So thank you very much and wish you all the best in your future endeavor. And Professor Roger and Dr. Sujit for adding value. So as we draw this entrepreneur session of conflict resolution to an end, I want to emphasize the power of collaboration and conflict resolution in our journey towards success. Today, we have navigated through the complexities and challenges that often accompany entrepreneurial endeavors. We recognize that disagreements and conflicts are not obstacles, but opportunities for growth and improvement. Just like Dr. Roger said, he has a new rule, which is helping everyone. In the world of entrepreneurship, it's essential to remember that every disagreement carries the potential to foster innovation, refine our strategies, and strengthen our teams. By engaging in open, respectful dialogues and seeking common ground, we can transform conflicts into stepping stones towards our shared goals. I've enjoyed my session today. I've enjoyed hosting this session. I hope all of you have equally got a lot of value from this session. Wish you all the best. We have another session coming tomorrow at 10 o'clock, same time, 10 o'clock Dubai time. Please join us for more enriching, value-added discussions that will help you in your entrepreneurial journey. Saying thank you once again, I'd now like to hand over the stage or the mic back to Kabir to close the session. Over to you, Kabir. Thank you, Jodhika. A wonderful session. And sure, we are going to have the second uh, part of this very, very near. I think uh, we have to have uh, Professor Roger and Dr. Sujit Manon. It has to be a big panel and I loved it. So, a sense from me, humans are emotional beings. Conflicts will happen. We can bring technology in part. But going forward, the blame game will start. So the best solution is always to listen and not take the decision at the time of anger. Try to give a day's sleep for them and try to discuss the same thing on the next day. You may have a very different perspective from all of the stakeholders in it. 
This was one thing. One time my mentor told, don't write the mail now, just wait for it, sleep, come back and then think of it once again. Most of the time, the conflict would resolve there. It's just a send from me, from a dreamer who has started 10 startups and almost had to close down each of, the, each of it. Have gone to the heights and have gone to the lows, but I still keep dreaming. When I kept my last startup on sleep this January, three months back, I started a new journey. That is to reach to 100 million people to make them solopreneurs, startups or entrepreneurs. I know a lot of people laugh at that 100 million people. But three months back, I came to know LinkedIn has that potential. Why not give it a try? Why not bring in that impact? I'm a dream weaver. You want any help, you can get back to me. We are conducting daily in one hour session. Early morning, UAE time, 5 a.m. to 6, 6 a.m., which consists of a small silence for 10 minutes, then 20 minutes of preparing your day, then 5 minutes of motivation by Jodhiga, and then a 20 to 25 minutes of workout. So please share this message to your friends, which will help us improve and help us reach our message to that 100 million people around the world who are going to create the jobs which we need right now. With lots of love, as always I tell, dream big, aim high, start small. Start very small that you, can, you only do one single thing. Work on that one skill, develop it, keep it brick by brick. Then one day you can see it is a highly scalable project and I want to see you all as high performance entrepreneurs with lots of love, again repeating it, dream big, aim high, start small, signing off, PC Kabir. Please do join for next session. In the count of three, closing the room. All can tell bye. Three, two, one. Bye, all. Bye. 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 Thank bye, you. Rajesh. Bye, Laura. Thank you very much. Bye, Dr. Sujit. Thank you. Bye to everyone.